Hello. It's been a little while since I did a video, so thank you for your patience. Everyone that's on my subscription list, I apologize. Uh, I've just been really busy over the last few months. Been, um, frankly, too busy to do a lot of book collecting, let alone having time to make any videos. But um, about one or two months ago, I was able to get a copy that's been on my bucket list for years. So um, I had to make some time to make a video of this particular book, and I'm really excited to be sharing this with you guys today. So without further ado, we're going to be taking a look at Moonchild by Alistair Crowley. This is the first edition, first printing of this book, published by Mandrake Press in 1929. So this is a fairly older book, um, almost 90 years old at this point. Um, I have been trying to get a hold of this book for years, like I said. Um, for various reasons, I have not been able to. Um, I've attempted to buy some at auction, talked to some dealers about it. Um, there's a lot of times where I just had qualms about some of the condition issues. Um, so I just have never been able to get a hold of it, but finally, sort of right place, right time, found the book, and I was just so pleased to finally get a hold of this book. So, as you can see, probably the first thing that you're going to notice about this book, and I'll do some close-up shots um, to follow, is this incredibly striking dust jacket. Um, this is, in my opinion, the single greatest dust jacket design ever. Um, if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll notice that my book collection and the things that I spend money on for books, um, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason behind it. It's because I typically just buy books that mean something to me personally, but um, I also view books sort of as art. And a really good dust jacket, even for a book that I'm not necessarily a huge fan of, is a big draw for me. I sort of view um, dust jackets really as like a type of unique art. And just blending that with something I love, which is books, is just sometimes I find these books and the very first second I saw this particular copy, um, I just knew that I had to have this book. So you can see on the front, there's sort of this very striking image here of uh, the heroine and a small baby next to her, the moon child. You can see sort of on the spine here, um, we get to see her again. And then on the back, there's sort of this very ominous looking uh, being on the back. And this very, overall, very Art Deco look to this um, dust jacket. There's a very unique looking signature down here at the bottom, which is a signature of the artist. Uh, his name was Beresford Egan. He is a, an artist from that time. He was an acquaintance of Aleister Crowley's and also published some books as well um, during the same time frame, um, also with Mandrake Press, uh, coincidentally. So um, in terms of the book itself, it's a, um, I'm not in full transparency a huge Aleister Crowley fan. Um, I don't read a lot of his works. Um, he has a bit of a cult following, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, so he's sort of well known now and he's fairly notorious at the time. I find him to be a very interesting um, person with a very interesting history. I would say of all of the books that he's written, um, this one is, I would say, probably his most readable. It's kind of his most commercial. It's kind of an interesting book. Um, the hero of the book is very sort of loosely based on him, and the villains in this book are based on people that he actually knew in person. So it's it's a very odd book. But um, I would definitely say if you haven't read Aleister Crowley's work and you're interested, this would probably be a good start um, just because it, it is a fairly readable book. Um, as I said, this book was published by Mandrake Press, and you can see that here on the bottom. Um, they were a private press um, that were started, I think that actually the, the year that this book came out in 1929, they were a small press, they didn't print a lot of books. I think they printed about 30 books in total over the life of the press. And uh, most of the books that they printed were sort of like this. They were not exactly the most um, commercial books. So it was sort of catering to a very small market. And um, unfortunately, they didn't do so well. They didn't make a lot of money. And after this book was printed, um, Alistair Crowley actually sort of stepped in to finance um, Mandrake Press. Um, he was sort of independently wealthy through his family and was able to do things like this. And um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to do much better. And the press actually um, went out of business in 1930. So they were not around very long. Um, this particular book they printed about 2,500 copies of, which was fairly large for the press, but um, sort of in the big scheme of things, that's a very small um, print run. So in terms of the scarcity of this book, this is a pretty hard book to come across, partially because the book's, you know, like I said, it's almost 90 years old at this point. Um, it was also a book that was not, at the time, you know, the most popular. You know, the Mandrake Press really struggled to sell copies of the book 
and Aleister Crowley was a fairly controversial figure. So um, there's just not a lot of copies of this that are floating around. Um, I'll go ahead and um, open up the desk jack a little bit more so you can see a little bit more information on here. On the inside flap, there's a little bit of information about Aleister Crowley, and it talks a little bit about Moonchild, a magical novel. Um, on the inside of the back flap, there's sort of another um, kind of uh, intimidating looking character on the inside there. Uh, the book itself is printed on a green cloth. It's a very sort of simple um, look here and it's got gold gilt on the edges here where you can just see um, the author, the title, and the press there on the spine. Um, in terms of what makes this particular copy um, special, um, well, first off, the condition of the book itself. This book is actually an unread copy. Um, everything is very, very tight. It's, it's in really good condition. Um, there is some condition issues to it. The top is, as you can see, there's a lot of sort of dust stain here on the top. Same here on uh, kind of this portion of the book. And then on the spine, um, it's just got a bit of sunning. So I would guesstimate that probably this book spent the vast majority of its life just sort of sitting on a bookshelf unread. And because of that, it's just had dust buildup and some, you know, sunning issues with the, the light here on the spine over the years. But otherwise, this book is in fairly immaculate condition. And finding copies of this book, let alone copies that are in condition like this, is incredibly hard. Um, even more so, finding the dust jacket at all is incredibly hard. Um, right now is the time of this particular video. There's actually only one book on the market right now that actually has a dust jacket, and that dust jacket is fairly beat up and has a lot of rips and tears and small pieces of the dust jacket are actually missing. So this is a very rare book to find in this particular condition and with the dust jacket. And obviously for me, when I was hunting for the book, the dust jacket was primarily what I was after. And so um, I was only really looking for a copy that had the dust jacket and also had the dust jacket in um, the best condition possible. And this is actually the nicest copy that I've ever um, personally seen or even seen online. So this is a really incredible find. I can't tell you how happy I was to find this book. Um, talking a little bit about um, price and value, I try to talk about that for people that are interested in collecting books um, or interested in finding copies that are similar to this. Um, it's not terribly difficult despite the low print run of about 2,500 copies. Um, it's not too difficult to still find uh, a couple of copies available online of the book assuming that you don't need the dust jacket. So you can find copies like that that are just in that green cloth in varying conditions. And those books will typically run you anywhere from $200, $300, or $400, kind of depending on condition from not so great condition up to pretty good condition, um, but without the dust jacket. Um, if you can find a copy with the dust jacket, um, that price will double or sometimes triple from there. So it's not uncommon to see copies in a very beat up dust jacket selling for $800 or $900. And then I've seen ones that are in nicer dust jackets selling considerably higher than that. Um, I've seen a lot of copies that are in very good condition like this, usually starting kind of at about $2,000 and then going up from there. Um, but again, it's, it's just a huge challenge to even find copies that have the dust jacket like this. So if you're interested in looking, those are sort of some figures that you'll probably want to keep in the back of your mind. But um, if you're really waiting to find kind of an immaculate dust jacket like this, you may need to wait kind of like I did for several years to be able to find um, a copy like that. So I want to say thank you for watching. I apologize this is kind of a short video, but um, I don't have a lot of time right now. So I just wanted to take a little bit just to share um, this book with you guys. So I'll do some close-up shots now so you can really appreciate the book. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully have another video up for you guys in the very near future. Thanks.